He seemed like a fairly ordinary guy. And like lots of ordinary guys, he apparently had a lead foot. But to traffic officer Fred Walker, there was something wrong. He looked as though he might even be drunk without showing it too much. So, just to satisfy himself, Officer Walker got him out and he walked him back to the patrol car. 7832, 1183, Angeles Forest, 10 miles north of the tunnel. 10 miles. Walker did nearly everything right, but there was one detail. His gun was too. Later, it seemed like an ordinary guy, but he turned out to be a mental case. But that didn't help Fred Walker. Fred Walker made one mistake, and it cost him his life. He was caught off guard in what he thought was a routine stop. A passing motorist thought there was something wrong and he called the highway patrol. It turned out that I was the one who answered the call. After we found Walker's gun, it didn't take long to reconstruct the crime. It was hard to believe that Walker could have been killed with his own gun. But to me, it was a tough reminder that proves too many of us can get to thinking it can't happen to me. There's one key factor that'll do more than anything else to ensure your safety when you're on the job, and particularly when you're making routine stops. This key factor is something that probably doesn't come natural to the average man, but it has to be not only a second nature, but first nature to any law enforcement officer. Yes, I'm talking about being continually suspicious of everybody. Just look at me. <laughs> I didn't realize it showed that much. It's a shame it has to be that way. But our work brings us in contact with the real bad apples in the barrel. We can't afford to forget that for one second. You've got to make suspicion such a habit that you never go wrong. you don't have to worry about somebody like this pulling a gun on you. Or do you? Just a few years ago, up around Santa Rosa, one of our men stopped a gal who was going too fast. As he walked over to the car, her boyfriend, AWOL, from the sheriff's honor camp down south, jumped up with a gun, blew the officer out of his shoes. So you can't take anything for granted. You just get in the habit of protecting yourself every second. Because death only takes a second under the right circumstances. You've got to be thinking about your own safety from the time you take off after the violator until the time you complete your contact with him. When he has pulled over and parked, you stop behind him, offsetting the patrol car a couple of feet to protect you from traffic if you're going to be working on the left side of the violator's car. If you couldn't do this safely because of too narrow a road, you'd park directly behind, slide out on the right, and approach from that side. In either instance, making your exit from the patrol car as quickly as possible. Maintaining myself alert. I keep my gun hand free. Never carry a flashlight or a citation book in my gun hand. First, Case the back seat. If it's night, I shine my flashlight in there. And in a case like this, the book is under my left arm. And I keep my gun hand free. 
Now that I'm sure there aren't any surprises from that direction, I approach the driver. But if possible, I don't ever go past the trailing edge of the door. Here's one good reason for this. Let's run through that again. A door suddenly flung open can throw you off balance and into the path of oncoming traffic. While your violator, who may be a wanted felon and who has no desire whatever to meet a lawman, makes a getaway. Now here's another reason. If your violator is inclined to pull a gun on you, this position makes it too easy for him. While in this position, he has to turn in his seat. It's awkward for a shooting and even awkward for getting aggressive because it puts him at a psychological disadvantage. You'll notice that I've still got my book in my left hand, so my gun hand is free until I'm satisfied that this is just an ordinary violator and not a hot one. Does this look like the same routine? Well, not quite. There are times when you want to get the violator out of his car. Maybe it's a question of whether he's had too much to drink or any of a number of other reasons. Sitting down, your man is not in too good a position to take action. But prepare for the worst, beginning when the door of the car is open, because some characters may try to deliver a low blow and succeed. So I always stand about like this, where I can take any sudden attempted blow on the leg. Once he's out of the car, I always keep the violator a safe distance in front of me. I ask him politely to step over to the patrol car. Then I follow him, remembering not to stop between the two vehicles. I direct him to a position near the front fender. Here, I don't have to worry about traffic going by, and I can hear my radio. Traffic officer Fred Walker did everything right up to this point. But he hadn't developed the habit of making his gun hard to get for anybody but himself. If I was about to forget it, Walker's case was a pretty grim reminder to always stand with my gun on the far side, so it won't be up for grabs. Now, while I'm writing him up, I keep track of the violator out of the corner of my eye. Even though he seems perfectly tame, I'm not taking any chances. I'm suspicious of him until he's back in his car and on his way. This is how I keep my suspicions sharpened up for the next person I stop. And the next person may be a real criminal. You never know. Is this the one who's going to start real trouble? No? Well then, anybody in the back seat? So far, so good. But it looks like this driver's going to be a problem. Right off the bat, he's surly. Maybe he's troublesome by nature. Or maybe a few drinks have made him mean. For whatever reason, he's decided that he isn't going to sign the citation and that he's going to defy me. So after an honest effort to get him to change his mind, it's obvious that he's going to have to be taken into custody. He's big enough to be real trouble. But I get him out all right. I direct him toward the patrol car from behind. I frisk him. And if you think that's the obvious thing any officer would do, you'd be amazed at how many times officers have failed to lift weapons from men they have arrested. Now for the handcuffs, because I'm not taking any chances with this character. I get one hand back, like this, then the other. The safest way to get him into the patrol car when you're alone is from the driver's side. Even with his hands behind him, he can slide over easily. This avoids the business of putting him in the right side, then getting around the car back to the driver's side. 
once he is over the front seat, I tie him in with a safety belt. In this case, it's my safety that's involved as much as his. It's pretty tough for him to give me real trouble now. But I'm still not going to take the situation for granted. So I even take the time to shift my gun over to the left side, just in case he turns out to be an escape artist. Once I get him to the station, you'd think I'd consider myself fairly safe. But if I did, I might be making a fatal mistake. This individual I have brought in has had time to build up a real head of steam. I've only done what had to be done. But in his mind, he's ready to start a one-man revolution. I've got him inside with the booking completed and the handcuffs are off. If you think he can't cause real trouble now, you're dead wrong. With the accent on the dead, your prisoner sees his chance. One fast grab, and it's a loaded situation. I'm not going to embarrass any particular law enforcement agency, but let's take statistics. We all know that the number of attacks on law enforcement officers has risen sharply in the last few years. I won't take percentages because that's being revised every year. If we don't take care of ourselves, it's going to be revised upward. If we do look after ourselves, it's bound to be revised downward. And it's my contention that if I safely establish the right kind of routine in making routine stops, the chances of anybody giving me a bad time are going to be cut way down. Too many of us get the word routine mixed up with monotonous. Just what does routine mean anyway? Well, according to the dictionary, routine means a regular, unvarying procedure, usually prescribed or habitual. So, habitually, you park to protect yourself. As you approach the violator's car, remember, it could contain a killer. Checking the back seat. Keeping the gun hand free. Not giving the driver a chance to shove the door open on you. And keeping him off balance by making him turn in his seat. You take precautions when you open the door if you have to get him out. You stay behind him and keep the gun out of his reach. You'll find that putting every violator on the suspect list will help you practice safety measures automatically. And you're automatically ready for action if they try to start it. So if routine means regular, unvarying procedure, make it your regular and unvarying procedure to look after your life. This is the kind of routine that will never stop paying off.